Uh, morning. So we're going to look at we're going to look at keto today and what it is and how to do it. So keto is essentially low carb. You cut your carbohydrate consumption right down to very very low levels. Now, the sort of reasoning behind this is that well, we tend to burn we burn fats for fuel. We also burn sugar for fuel. So when we cut down our carbohydrate consumption, we burn more fats. And throughout the day, you know, this is true, we do burn fat, we do burn carbs, and if you're consuming less carbs, you are going to burn more fat. However, if you're consuming too many calories, you'll still gain weight, whether you're on a ketogenic diet or not. That's kind of a misunderstanding. People feel like because they're on it, they can eat whatever. But calories still matter. And obviously, fat's quite high in calories. Now, the difference is, is that fat is very satisfying, just as protein is. People who do ketogenic, well, they tend to consume more of those things. So they feel fuller. They feel like good energy. And they're also cutting out a shit ton of food groups. So they inevitably consume less calories and they lose weight. That is what happens. And if you enjoy it and you feel good doing it, fair play. I actually do. I like it. I don't do it all the time. I do phases of it. Because I find that when I do it, I find it makes fat loss easier. It makes sticking to a calorie deficit easier. And I also feel that when I do put carbohydrates back into, back into my diet, I respond well to them. I seem to feel like my workouts go really well. I always, what I tend to do is I cut in between comps and then when I come to a comp, I throw them back in. And it makes training easier and it makes gaining muscle easier. That's That's been my experience with it. And I personally like it and I personally use it. However, it's not for everyone. You know, it, it, it can be quite stressful. You're cutting out loads of foods that you like and enjoy. And as I've said many, many times, if you can't see yourself sustaining it, then maybe it's not right for you. Well, it, it isn't. If you can't sustain something, it isn't right for you. That doesn't mean you can't use it here and there or use some of the principles of it. Now, another thing to understand and that people sort of, a mistake people make with it is that it isn't just eating as much fat as you want, as much cheese and bacon. You need saturated fat, you need monosaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. You need a balance of those things. So it's not just eating bacon, you need to be having like extra virgin olive oils as dressings and things. You need to be having fish oils or fish, you need to be having your avocados. But you, you know, you need to be getting other sources of fats in there, you know, looking at nuts and things like that. It isn't just bacon. And that's, you know, basically what could happen is you eat, I like saturated fat, it's great if you're especially for dudes. But if you get the balance wrong, well, it could affect other health markers, it could affect your cholesterol, it could affect your heart health, even if you're losing weight. So it's important to understand that you need to have a balance of good fats. It's not just about eating lots of bacon. The other one is that people tend to overconsume meat, so they eat a shit ton of protein, they eat loads of it. Now this, actually, you, if you're doing that, you're not actually in a ketogenic diet. The whole point of a ketogenic diet is you take your carbohydrate consumption very, very low, your fat consumption very high, and your product, your protein consumption is quite moderate. Now, and then you enter ketosis, which is where you're essentially using ketones for fuel, which produces by your body, blah, blah, blah. But essentially burning fat for fuel, which in your brain's using it as well. And you do generally feel good. I found when I'm on ketosis, I feel quite cool. I feel like my brain fires really well. It's, yeah, it's, it's cool. I like it. I, you know, again, I recommend trying it if you feel like it's something for you. But when you consume too much protein, well, what happens is, well, your body, your body likes carbohydrate. Your brain particularly likes glucose. So what it will do is it will take that excess protein that you're consuming and it will actually break it down. It's a process called gluconeogenesis and it's basically the converting of protein into carbohydrate. It's actually quite taxing. So what I've found is when I've messed up with it in the past and I've had loads of protein, you, you just hit a point where you feel really shitty. Really, really shitty. And this is when this is happening. So you have to be careful of your protein intake. So I've done a little pulse there and I've showed the macros. Generally looking 6% fat, 30% protein, 10% carbohydrates. That's the general guideline. Now personally, I wouldn't go for that straight away. I wouldn't just jump into full on ketosis. People do it and anyone I know who does it, who's done it like that, you feel terrible. You get what's called the keto flu and you just feel minging for a few days. You do feel good after it, but not everyone does. Some people, like I said, it just isn't right for. But what I'd say is sort of dip your toe in. So look at maybe doing something that they'll call cyclical cyclical ketosis and or you could call it carb cycling if you like. And you basically consume your carbohydrates in the evening. So fats and protein in the day, not quite the macros I suggested earlier, maybe 50% fat, maybe you know 30% protein, 20% carbs. Again, that's going to be for you to figure out what's best for you. But you basically you consume your carbs with tea. 
this will actually help you sleep a bit better as well because when we eat carbs later on it kind of controls our stress hormone levels and yeah it's a good thing to do and it's a good way to do it and then you'd say maybe do that five days a week and then have a couple of higher carbohydrate days in there and that's essentially what is known as carb cycling i would say that's a good way to introduce yourself to it and you know what if you do that it suits you and you feel good well then maybe try pushing it a bit further but i wouldn't just jump in because you're gonna feel shitty the main point is that when you follow it you just have to understand that calories still matter and that's what's happening like with any diet so don't think it's doing something magical don't think it's better than any other diet there is health benefits tied to it there is people will shout about it and go it does this that and the other it does but if you're still overweight and all that shit matters the best best thing you need you can do is well not be fat that's the best thing you can do for your health so worry about that and whoever you get there that's the best diet for you so don't get obsessed over it or get obsessed with those health benefits but understand that it could be potentially be a tool that will help you get there so i'd experiment and see if it works see if you like it and go from there obviously it's just a one much love